YouTubers, it's Ryan again from West Hayes Homebrew. Today I'm going to be doing the uh, Black Country, Black Country, the Black Current hard apple cider that I suggested I would do in my previous Homebrew Wednesday. The reason that I'm brewing this is because my wife likes sweet ciders when she drinks, which ain't very often, but she always has to have black in it. So I've recently done a strawberry hard apple cider based on the Brewmaster Ben recipe um, using one litre ready-made rye bean net that comes already in a box like one of these and I found that the strawberry wasn't really strong enough I figured it needed to be a bit a bit more strawberry and perhaps a little bit less apple so what I decided what I decided at that point was I was when I did my next strawberry I'd buy the cordial like this and I would make it up to twice whatever rye bean is say is the standard dilution rates and see if that made it a bit stronger. But then I decided that instead of doing a strawberry one, I did a strawberry one for a friend of mine, I want to try the blackcurrant one for my wife and see how we get on with that. So I've got blackcurrant, which I'm going to dilute at twice the standard strength that Ribena recommend. I've got four litres of 100% apple juice from concentrate. Now what I'm going to do, because this has got some preservatives in it. I'm going to boil this. I'm going to make the solution up to a litre at double strength and then I'm going to boil it for 10 minutes to try and boil off some of the preservatives and the nasties. Um, I'll probably make it up to slightly more than a litre, just over, depending on what the dilution recommendation is, uh, to allow for a little bit of boil off. Okay, so now you can see I've made up my Ribena solution. Uh, look, you can see my. Uh, my Demijohn's sat currently in star san sanitising. I'm going to be using Young's yeast nutrient, you know, Young's yeast nutrient, along with uh, Young's super wine yeast compound. Uh, I've used that before with great success. I've also got everything else that I'm uh, going to be using: the top, the uh, hydrometer, trial jar, my uh, turkey baster for sampling, and also. The bubbler and what have you for uh, so that's all ready. I've currently got uh, here, look, that's my Robina solution starting to warm up. I made the solution up according to Robina, it's one part Robina to four parts water. Because I've chose to double it, I'm making that two to four or one to two. So I've put 700 700ml of water with 350ml of Robina. Which allows me 50 ml for, for boiling off when it's uh, when I'm trying to boil off all the nasties. So I should come back to you when that's boiled and we'll start putting it in the uh, image on. As you can see, we're now getting a rolling boil, so I'm going to start the timer for 10 minutes. Be back when it's good to go. Right, while I'm waiting for the Ribena to boil. I thought I'd get the uh, apple juice in the fermenter. Pretty dull, but I'll show you anyway what I'm doing. I've emptied out, oh, worked some tea out on Star Sun. It's been in there for oh, probably 10 15 minutes now, I bet, while I've been there. Uh, sorting all the bits and bobs out and getting everything together. I'll get as much of that out of there, there's lots of foam. But, uh, I'm told by the people that know better than me that. The foam's good, it acts as a, as a nutrient, so let's do that. Right, let's get the scissors out, get my little bucket of star sun over here. Just that there, all nicely uh, sterilised, as well as my funnel, which has also been set in a sterilising solution for quite a while now. I don't know whether anybody uses any other brand of. Uh, What's it? Any other brand of uh, apple juice? I, I just Tesco happens to be my local big store. I don't do my normal shopping in there to be fair, but it's a brilliant 24 hour corner shop, I've got to be honest. And, uh, I think these columns knock out about 63, 64 p, which I think is about average to be fair. I think if memory serves me, I did use uh, Asda's last time, but uh, they're much of a muchness. With the natural sugars, it will come out, I'm guessing. Around the six percent mark when I do the OG, sorry, the yeah, starting gravity. We'll uh, have a bonzi. As you can see, 
concerned because this is pretty dark out there. I'm trying to do a film of leaking. Apple juice everywhere. Oh, I'm quite looking forward to this. I'm not a big fan of cider, as, as I mentioned in my last video. I'm not a big fan of cider personally. And having said that, the uh, first first hard apple cider that I did, uh, that was just an apple cider, it was really good. Um, and the strawberry one was nice as well, with a hint of strawberry. But when I did a side side by side comparison of the strawberry one with uh, strawberry copperberry. Strawberry Copperberg was a lot sweeter and it was also a lot more strawberry which led me to consider the uh, doubling up the dilution rates on the Ribena. So, but then I thought, well, my wife's not mad keen on the strawberry cider basically. Basically she's not mad keen on any cider other than box down apple cider. But even that's got a black in it, hence why I'm doing this little, uh, little black experiment. Well I think that'll do for now. I'll leave that one until I've put the right bean in and see what we need to top it up with. See you shortly. Okay peeps, 10 minutes are up. I've got my uh, right bean solution and I'm just sticking it in the bath of water just to cool it down before I stick it in the uh, apple juice. I have, I'm wearing my little uh, stars on it. I've got a thermometer. And uh, I will be testing the temperature um, as we go along and I'll show you when it, I'll come back to you when it's uh, around about warm enough to stick in to be fair it's still steaming so it's going to be a while yet. okay I'm back peeps the uh, right bean is now down to about 30 degrees roughly speaking so I think by the time I've uh, tipped that into me Three litres of room temperature apple juice. I don't think we're going to be far away from where we're looking at, to be fair. So, right. what I'll do just to make sure I don't make a bolt up of this is I'm going to put this in here. Let me see if there we go. Say it smells really nice, it smells very black currant. Obviously, right being that as standard, it's quite syrupy anyway. Just to be fair, so. Give that a little shake around, it's all uh, mixed up. Right. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more apple juice. Take the uh, gravity reading, pitch the yeast, and away we go. <laughs> That's handy. Quality. Gotta love Tesco, innit? Pretty old fashioned way, shall I? Free hand without this funnel. I think that'll about do, I think. Fairly happy with that. I'll just uh, get the top out the star sanitizer and give it a little bit of an agitation. Give it a good shake up. There we go, with it all nice and round. Pop them back in the star sun while I wait. Right, let's take a wee little sample. This has all just come out of the star sun, so it's all nicely sanitised, clean, and good to go. I do believe the uh, Wilco's Coast Turkey Baster was Brewmaster Ben's idea, and it's actually significantly cheaper than a wine thief. And uh, 69p I think this was bargain right that's that done so let's get the uh, yeast and the yeast nutrient in in my little is it is a question uh, leave me a message in the comments 
Anytime I do this kind of thing with my uh, measuring spoon, or let's say for instance I'm priming bottles or I'm back sweetening bottles, I've just I was just taking this out of the staff stand so it's nice and uh, sanitised, but it's wet. And obviously the second I want to stick this in the yeast nutrient, it's going to get all caked up in yeast nutrient. Any good ideas on how to dry this, if you will, but also leave it sanitised? Any ideas? Leave me some comments down below. Right, yeast nutrients first up. And I'm pretty sure it's uh, one level teaspoon per gallon. So we've got a gallon here, so I'm going to go for a level teaspoon. There we go. In she blows. A little uh, wash out. Nutrient now for the super wine yeast compound. What I may do is, I like the results of this to be fair, and I'm getting, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's not a great deal left in there. I may buy a cider yeast. That's a heat tool. So there we go. I may buy a cider yeast next time. See if that uh, gives any better a result. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure whether it will, to be fair, but. Uh, Obviously we don't need the uh, wine yeast capacity because this ain't going to be anywhere near top percent. I'm guessing it's probably going to be, I don't know, 6 percent I would guess. Somewhere around about there. You know I didn't check the temperature. Ha! Huh, what a spanner! What a spanner! A bit of yeast and I haven't checked the must temperature. Better go back and check that. See? Best lay plans of mice and men. Still balls it up just as easily. Let's pop this in here and see what we've got. I'm kind of figuring that it's going to be... It's 32 degrees, the Ribena must, so that's right at the top end of the uh, range for yeast. But I'll put it a litre into three litres of room temperature water, which I'm getting water, juice, which I'm guessing is going to be about 18 degrees at the moment. Yes, yeah, so that's 22. Perfect. See? Got it right, even by fluke. Check that out. Right. Top back on. Little bit of an agitation, get that all mixed around, lovely jubbly. <coughs> Sealed up. Yep, good seal. There she blows. One experimental double strength Ribena cider. I'll, uh, Ribena black currant cider. I'll let you know. In a, it'll be two weeks after I've bottled, primed it, back sweetened it. I'll do a little taste test on it and see if it's any good. I forgot to show you the uh, starting gravity. So let's have a look. Stick it on my flat surface over here and have a little uh, twizzly twizzly. Let's see what we've got. Right, I'll make that about. That's about 1052. Starting gravity is about 1052. So, what are you looking? 1052 is probably going to be somewhere around the 6% mark, I would guess. And as you can see, I haven't added any sugar. So actually, it's quite scary how much natural sugar is in your bog standard apple juice. That'll ferment out quite nicely. 1052. It's going to get down to uh, probably just under one, 995 maybe. So yeah, you're going to be talking off the top of my head without calculating it. Around about six percent, I would guess. Okay, guys, I'm back. Just uh, doing a temperature check on my blackcurrant cider and uh, a gravity reading. And sadly, because I've had these in the uh, airing cupboard, this bad boy currently, and I'm assuming this one as well, soon as they were next to each other, is sat at 32 degrees. So I am a little concerned that uh, I may have some off flavours and I may have fried the yeast. However, well you can see the uh, hot cider is bubbling again. Very steadily, 
No, it's not going to do it now. But it was definitely bubbling while I was talking to you about the black current just. Anyway. So I did an OG and obviously this needs correcting slightly for the increase in temperature. I don't know whether you can see that. No, you probably can't. Anyway, it's currently sitting at 0.996. So that has more or less totally fermented out in three days, four days, four days. As I say, it's been too warm really to be fair. So it will be interesting to see what that comes out like. I'm going to leave it a few days just to make sure in where it is now, a bit cooler in here. Still, still sort of 24 degrees, but it's not 32 degrees. So we'll see how it goes and then give it a week to clear, perhaps. And I'll carbonate it, bottle it, and then we'll uh, we'll see how she blows. How do, peeps? Right, finally, this is the black currant, experimental black currant cider, bottled and chilled. Now I did try and video the bottling to explain to you what I was doing. Unfortunately, apparently the camera packed up again and only filmed the first eight seconds. So I ain't gonna put that in because it's a waste of time. But basically all I did was fold into these pint bottles, I back sweetened it with four tablespoons of Splendor and I primed it with a heaped tablespoon of dextrose. Now because this, had, as you saw earlier in the video, had fermented out really early, I let, left it to stand for probably four or five days before I actually bottled it and I think to be fair, because it's not the first one that I've had, a lot of the yeast dropped out into the trouble. So it hasn't carbonated as well as perhaps I would have liked to. But uh, let's have a look. Maybe you can see. There's a little bit of smoke, not a great deal. So actually, as you can see, that has actually carbonated up quite well, to be fair, in this bottle. It's, uh, it is quite clear there's a bit of chill haze on the glass. It's uh, kind of an off-pinky colour, I, was, I suppose, like a pinky red, perhaps. You still smell the, uh, the, the apple quite strong. I think for me personally, the four, the four tablespoons of Splendor that I've back sweetened this with, that's just about done the trick. Bang on. Um, it's not uh, bitter, it's not too sweet. It's kind of a medium, I suppose, for want of a better description. Um, can taste the black ever so slightly. There's definitely a slightly different taste to a straight hard apple cider. Uh, this comes out about 6%, I think from memory. Um, and actually chilled, it's really quite nice. Yeah, definite tang to it, more than just a standard apple cider. I think if I was to do this again, I think the four tablespoons, four teaspoons of uh, Splendour for the back sweetening is good. But I would perhaps make uh, the black currant a little stronger. Potentially go for I did it like one to two this time. Next time I might even do it one to one and do 500 ml of black currant with 500 ml of water and see how that comes out. Um, that's not bad actually. So for some of you can see how clear that is in the light behind me. Now that's come out pretty clear to be fair. I think it would have perhaps been a little bit more carbonated had I have waited not waited quite so long to bottle it. It's been in the bottle. Uh, I left it five days to uh, secondary ferment in the bottle. And I left it in the same place that I've got both my wine and my beer fermenters at the moment, which is at about 22 degrees. And this has been in the fridge for 24 hours now. So it's a quite a nice drink. 
so anyway thanks for watching rate subscribe and uh, i'll see you on the next experimental homebrew see ya i don't know whether uh, i mentioned it earlier but i made this black corn cider for my wife not a big cider drinking myself i made this for my wife because she likes cider but it's got a black in it however between me and you i'm not sure how much of this she's gonna see Shh.